Did Samsung just make a compromise with the Galaxy S25 Ultra's display? When the company unveiled the Galaxy S25 Ultra, it brought with an upgraded version of Corning's display protection called Corilla Armor 2. The new protection was designed to improve the durability of the device's screen. However, recent tests have raised a significant concern among users. This new protection seems to have sacrificed scratch resistance in favor of other features. So the question is, did Samsung make the right trade-off or did it let down users who care about maintaining a pristine, scratch-free screen? Gorilla Armor 2 is the latest version of Corning's glass protection introduced with the Galaxy S25 Ultra. It promises to offer an improved layer of protection compared to the original Gorilla Armor that was used in the Galaxy S24 Ultra. The new material has been described by Corning as the industry's first scratch-resistant anti-reflective glass ceramic cover material for mobile devices. The idea was to create a display that was resistant to both scratches and drops. According to Corning, the new Gorilla Armor 2 is capable of surviving drops from up to 2.2 meters or 7.2 feet on hard surfaces like concrete, which is an impressive feat. On paper, Gorilla Armor 2 sounds like a great upgrade, offering enhanced durability and anti-reflective properties. However, when it comes to scratch resistance, the new protection has some surprising shortcomings. Independent tests performed by YouTuber Jerry Ridge Everything, known for his durability tests, revealed that the Galaxy S25 Ultra's Gorilla Armor 2 panel didn't fare as well in terms of scratch resistance compared to the previous version. The tests use a Mohs hardness scale, which is a system for ranking the scratch resistance of minerals. The results were revealing the Galaxy S25 Ultra's display started to show noticeable scratches at level 6 on the Mohs scale. For context, last year's Galaxy S24 Ultra, equipped with the original Gorilla Armor, resisted scratches at level 7 and, in some cases, even at level 8. The scratches that appeared on the S24 Ultra were so faint that they were almost invisible to the naked eye, making the display look almost as good as new. But now, with the Galaxy S25 Ultra and its Gorilla Armor 2, users are seeing clear signs of wear and tear from everyday use that weren't as apparent before. So why did this happen? The answer likely lies in the tricky balance between scratch resistance and shatter resistance. Glass is a delicate material and improving one aspect of its durability often results in a trade-off with another. Corning has likely made adjustments to the Gorilla Armor formula in order to improve the drop resistance of the Galaxy S25 Ultra's display. The new glass might be more impact resistant, capable of surviving higher drops without cracking. However, this improvement in drop resistance could have come at the cost of scratch resistance. Here's the science behind it. Scratch resistance and shatter resistance are often in opposition to each other. A material that is designed to be more resistant to scratches is usually harder and more brittle. Is Samsung running out of ideas for its foldable phones? A recent leak suggests that the upcoming Galaxy Z Fold 7 might not be a groundbreaking device, but rather a slight upgrade of an existing model. Instead of bringing fresh innovation, Samsung appears to be refining a previous release and rebranding it as something new. The leak, coming from a reliable source, claims that the Galaxy Z Fold 7 will be an improved version of the Galaxy Z Fold Special Edition, which was launched in select markets back in October. That model featured a larger display compared to the Galaxy Z Fold 6, but had a thinner design, making it incompatible with the S Pen. Despite that limitation, it gained attention for offering the same powerful 200 megapixel camera as the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Early reports had already suggested that the Galaxy Z Fold 7 would remove the digitizer which is the layer beneath the screen that enables S Pen support. Now, new leaks reveal even more similarities between the upcoming device and the special edition. It looks like Samsung isn't aiming for major improvements, but is instead bringing minor refinements to an already existing model. According to well-known tipster at Thigalox underscore, the Galaxy Z Fold 7 will essentially be a global version of the Galaxy Z Fold special edition with slight modifications. The upcoming model is expected to inherit the Special Edition's larger inner and main displays along with its 200 megapixel primary camera. Samsung is also expected to introduce a new chipset, which was widely anticipated, and a larger cooling chamber to keep up with the upgraded hardware. However, aside from these changes, the only noticeable improvement will be an upgraded speaker system. This decision seems to be driven by sales trends. While the Galaxy Z Fold Special Edition was in high demand and kept selling out, the standard Galaxy Z Fold 7 reportedly struggled to attract buyers. With that in mind, Samsung might be taking a strategic approach, repackaging the special edition, upgrading the processor, improving the speakers, and marketing it as the new Fold 7. But what does this mean for Samsung's foldable lineup? On one hand, it makes sense from a business perspective. If the special edition was successful, refining and relaunching it as a global model could help Samsung strengthen its position in the foldable market. 
On the other hand, this move could be disappointing for longtime Samsung fans who expect significant improvements with each new release. For years, Samsung has led the foldable smartphone industry by pushing the boundaries of design and functionality. However, if the Galaxy Z Fold 7 turns out to be just a slightly refined version of an existing model, it might suggest that Samsung is playing it safe instead of taking bold risks. Some users might feel that this approach lacks excitement, especially when competitors like Google and Honor are stepping up their game in the foldable phone market. The big question is, will Samsung's strategy work? Will the Galaxy Z Fold 7 manage to attract more buyers by refining the special edition, or will fans see through the rebranding and demand more innovation? What do you think? Is this a smart move by Samsung, or should they be aiming for something more ambitious with their foldable lineup? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more updates on the latest tech. Is Google finally delivering the ultimate battery upgrade for its budget-friendly Pixel lineup? The upcoming Pixel 9a is rumored to launch on March 19, with sales beating on March 26. It is expected to stick to the winning formula of previous models, offering great value with a refined design, the latest Tensor chipset, and improved overall experience. But the biggest question remains, how much better will the battery life be? Leaks suggest that the Pixel 9a will feature a massive 5,100 mAh battery. This is a huge step up from the Pixel 7a and Pixel 8a, which had batteries of 4,385 mAh and 4,492 mAh, respectively. Even the standard Pixel 9 has a smaller 4,700 mAh battery. The only current generation Pixel with a similar capacity is the Pixel 9 Pro XL, which comes with a 5,060 mAh battery. If these rumors are accurate, the Pixel 9 a might set a new benchmark for battery life in Google's lineup. What makes this potential upgrade even more exciting is the possibility of new battery technology. In recent years, phone manufacturers like OnePlus, Vivo, and Honor have adopted lithium silicon battery technology, which allows for greater energy density without increasing the size. If Google is experimenting with similar advancements, the Pixel 9 a could achieve longer battery life without making the phone significantly thicker or heavier. While it's not confirmed whether Google will use this technology, the possibility alone makes the Pixel 9 a even more interesting. Battery life, however, is influenced by more than just battery size. The efficiency of the processor also plays a crucial role. The Pixel 9a is expected to come with Google's latest Tensor G4 chipset, which could bring improved power management. If the chipset optimizes battery usage well, the Pixel 9a could last even longer on a single charge. This combination of a larger battery and a more efficient processor could give users an all-day experience without worrying about running out of power. But while the battery capacity is getting a major boost, charging speeds might remain unchanged. Reports suggest that the Pixel 9a will retain the same 18-watt wired charging and 7.5-watt wireless charging as previous models. For a phone with a 5,100 mAh battery, that means a full charge could take close to two hours. For comparison, the Pixel 8, it takes approximately one hour and 46 minutes to charge fully, while the Pixel 7 requires about two hours. Faster charging speeds would have been a welcome upgrade, especially considering that many competitors now offer significantly higher charging rates. However, Google seems to be sticking with its standard charging speeds for the Pixel 9a. Despite the slow charging, the real highlight is the potential for extended battery life. A larger battery means fewer worries about needing a charger throughout the day. If Google optimizes the software well, the Pixel 9a could outperform other phones in its category when it comes to endurance. This makes it an attractive option for those who prioritize battery longevity over fast charging.